that you can come out of the place of being unaware of God. You listen to stuff like this right here, what you're listening to now. You allow yourself to be taught about God. You allow yourself to be taught about God and the ways of God. You get with someone that is not opinionated about God, but they stay factual concerning God. They are factual concerning him. They're not opinionated. And what I mean by opinionated is they're not going to be saying things like, well, you know, I, I don't feel like, um, you know, you know, I you know I just don't feel like God uh, is this or God is that. Anytime you hear that word, I don't feel. That's an opinion. You're about to get an opinion. You know what? You know I just don't. I really just don't feel. You know. Now it's a difference if they use the word I don't sense. If I'm talking to someone and I'm trying to convey over what I sense that God is saying versus what I feel concerning what they're doing, then I'll use the word sense. And I will say, I don't sense, you know, it's just some, I, for some reason, I just don't sense you need to do that. I don't sense you need to go there. But if I say, I don't feel you need to go there, then it's some type of emotion that is connected to it. So then when you are learning of God, you cannot be dealing with people. And I don't care if they got on a clergy collar. I don't care if they've been pastoring 20 years. I don't care. If all they got to talk about is a feeling, that's not what you need. Because you're not going to be taught what God really does. See, when you're being taught what God really does and who God really is, Sometimes it comes in the form of correction. So that means that sometimes it's not going to always be something you want to hear. When you be dealing with people with feelings, then feelings are always going to try to make them say what you want to hear. And they're going to be scared to challenge you when you deal with people with feelings. But if you are dealing with someone that... Chasing and pursuing the mind and the heart of God, then that's what they're going to give you, is the mind and the heart of God. And so they're going to say, well, according to the word of God, X, Y, Z, it's not going to be about feelings. You know, like for instance, I'll give y'all a, I'll give y'all a further example to help y'all understand it. A lot of people are saying, you know, that uh, fire and brimstone, hell, you know, that, um, heaven and hell preaching or what have you is not for the hour to which we are in. Well, I beg to differ with that and I'll tell you why. Heaven and hell is still exist in the time we're living in. So why would you think that the preaching about it shouldn't exist? If heaven and hell still exist, why shouldn't preaching be done about it? Why shouldn't people preach that you going to hell? Why can't a preacher say, you going to hell? Why can't a preacher say that? This preacher says it like this. We going to hell if we don't quit that mess we doing. That's how this preacher said it. But you're not going to stop me from saying and teaching about hell because hell does exist. Now, I'll say we, and I'll tell you why I say we. It's because even as a preacher, I'm still subject to go myself. Just because I'm a preacher don't mean I can't go. He said in his word that it was going to be depart from me. For I never knew you, you worker of iniquity. And said that the preachers was going to be saying, well, Lord, I cast out demons in your name. I lay hands on the sick in your name. What you mean? I got to go to hell. Yeah, you got to go to hell because your heart wasn't with me. Your mouth spoke of me, but your heart was not with me. So you're going to hear me say, yeah, we go. Yeah, we. You're going to hear me say we, we. But I'm going to teach about hell because hell is a real place. I'm going to teach about heaven because heaven is a real place. 
and it is not in a tactic or form to scare people, but it is so that you know that it really exists. There is no way that you can stand before God and righteously be judged for something you do not know about. You cannot be charged for a crime you don't know nothing about. You it, Even the judicial system in the natural world can't do that. They cannot try you for something you don't know anything about. If somebody goes right now, I'm at home. I live in Kingston, Alabama. And somebody goes and op right now to Wells Fargo, breaks a window at Wells Fargo, goes in and steals at Wells Fargo. The police cannot come out here to Kingston to arrest me. Why? Because I don't know nothing about it. Nothing about it. But now if I'm sitting in the parking lot in the getaway car, when they go in there and do that, I'm going to get a charge too. I'm going to get a charge too. Because I'm guilty now by association. So the thing of it is, you've got to know about these things. So y'all got to be careful about the stuff that people are, are teaching. Things that people are putting out in folks' ear. It's not the truth. It is so opinionated. That's what it is. Jesus even preached the gospel in talking about the kingdom and talking about what hell would be. He even he was the one that let it be known about hell for real. So then how can we say that? You gotta make sure that you get somewhere with someone when you are. I'm still in the text Ephesians chapter 5 and 14 I'm talking to you about the fact of where it says arise from the dead which means that that is a an a unawareness of God so if you have an unawareness of God then you need to get with someone that is going to teach you concerning the things of God and then it says and Christ shall give the light that's what it says Christ shall give the light you see what I'm saying Christ is going to give you light that's where your hope is your hope, ain't, your hope is in Christ. Your peace is in Christ. Everything that you need is in Christ. If you're looking to get it from someone that's mere flesh, you're looking to get it from mortality, then you're going, you're, that's why your feelings keep getting hurt. Because your hope has got to be in Christ. Verse 15, let's go to verse 15. It says, see then that thou walk circumspectly, not as fools. Listen to what he says, we're winning in life, y'all. Not as fools, we're winning in life. I'm going to work this for y'all tonight. Listen to me now. It says, see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Okay, circumspectly. Let me give it to you. Circumspect means that you are prudent. And what prudent means is, is that you have a, a vision for what's coming. You have a vision for the future. The Lord told me last year that we would come into a time of prudency. A time of prudency. This is a prophetic word God gave me at Trim on last year. That we would come into a time of prudency. Which meant that we would begin to care about our future. So he says right here, do not walk See then that you walk circumspectly, which means you need to care about your future. If you don't have a plan, a future, and a hope for yourself, then come on, man. You literally don't think that you have purpose. If you don't have a plan and a hope for yourself, even a vehicle has purpose. That vehicle is sitting, you know, a vehicle has a purpose to get you from one destination to another. One destination to another. So you've got to walk circumspectly, which means that you've got to be prudent, which is to have a future, a hope in line for yourself. And then it says that you walk towards your future, not as fools, but as wise. That's right. That's winning in life. Verse 16. I'm going to go through 17. I'm going to go through verse 17. We're at 16 now. It says redeeming the time. Check it out now because the days are evil. Let's talk about this redemption of time for a minute. Redemption of time. Redeeming. Redeeming the time. Redeeming literally means to buy back. It is to regain possession of. That's what redeeming is. When you redeem something, that means you regain possession of. 
you regain possession of. I have one of my credit cards I get points on, so I'm bad about it. That's the one I'll be swiping because I get points. And before I know it, I've racked up $25, you know, here, whatever, and it'll give me an option to redeem. Now, those $25 before I redeem them still belongs to Navy Federal. But once I hit redeem, re, hit redeem, I buy them back. I regain possession of what belongs to me. So it says redeeming the time. Regain your time. What is your time? Your, your existence? Your life? That's what your time is. Your existence, your life. It says regain your life, man. Stop letting them folk walk around with your life. Stop allowing those people to walk around with your heart in their hand. Stop. Redeem your time. Stop allowing them people that hurt you to still have you. Would you please redeem your time? Stop allowing the failures to hold you. Would you please redeem your time? Girl, y'all, listen, I done bought back so much time. The people that the people that had my time and stuff, they about bankrupting their own life. I done bought back so much time. I done bought my time back. You ain't walk around with nothing belonging to me. I, 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 give me my... <clears throat> I, I'm going to come to you nice and say, um, can I please get my time back? And if you want to act a fool, <laughs> and then I'm make the earrings out, and all, and I'm give me my time. Now I mean that. Give me my time. You mm -mm. redeeming the time now. Redeeming the time. Some of y'all got yourselves in some folks' hands. You still letting the old flings walk around with you in their hands. You still letting the old relationships and stuff that people said and. People, you know, old teachers that hurt you in school. You, 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 you know, um, no, baby, I'm redeemed my time. I, I don't got all my points. Uh-uh. <laughs> uh-uh. 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 Mm -mm. It says redeeming the time because the days of, are evil. You see why you got to redeem it? It said because the days are evil. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. So that literally is letting us know things are not going to get better. Days are evil. Evil meaning distorted. Evil meaning perversion, which is to be twisted. Evil meaning wicked thoughts, wicked imagination. He says this is what the days consist of. So you need to redeem your time. You need to buy back your life. You need to buy back your peace. You need to buy back your joy. You need to buy back your love. You need to buy back your fruit. You need to buy it back. Look like somebody wants to come on camera. Wait a minute. Hold up. Sabrina, it says you want to come on camera. If you do come in, and I'll let you on. I'm figuring either you did that or the baby done did it one because I know you ain't trying to, you, oh, oh, if you trying to come on, you know I'm going to let you in here. And by the way, you know, if it does say, if you do want to come on, all you have to do is send me a request. I don't mind bringing somebody on. I don't mind. But like I said, you have to redeem your time. You have to redeem your time, which means to buy it back. So please stop allowing people to walk around with you in their pockets, handling you any kind of way because you will not redeem yourself from them. You, it is your responsibility to redeem your time. It is not their responsibility. I don't know why people think that it is the responsibility of someone else 
of or either the one that hurt them to provide the healing to them. All they can do is say that they're sorry and sometimes you won't even get 